Westchester County Executive George Latimer is rolling the political dice, challenging a sitting congressman in his own party. So why have you decided that Jamal Bowman has got to go? Well, I think what we're looking at, Marcia, is Democrats in Westchester and the Bronx having a choice being able to go to the polls and deciding what direction do they want to have their representation take. If you go back four years ago, there was a sitting congressman, Elliot Engel, and Jamal Bowman made the decision to do the same thing, to give voters a choice. He won that primary and has served now into his second term. I'm doing that now because as I look at the issues in Washington, D.C., what I see is a lot of performance art, but not a lot of performance. And so I think that given the record that I've had over my career, the things that I've done in, as a state legislator, as the county executive of Westchester County, that that represents progressive policies that get results as opposed to those that are just based on rhetoric. And I'm willing to uh, put the time and energy and effort in to make a case. And then we'll see what the Democratic voters of Westchester and Bronx say. If they like the direction they're heading in, they'll make that choice. But if they want to see a change, and I think I can offer them a substantive change, then, th then I'm, uh, that's why I'm in. So when you talk about substantive changes, what kind of substance are you talking about? What are the kinds of things that you want to see coming out of Washington that you haven't seen from Jamal Bowman's uh, candidacy and his, his representation of the entire district? Well, I think the first thing is when you look at the district that we have, the district lines may change, but it's both an urban and a suburban district. And our urban communities, the North Bronx, City of Mount Vernon, Yonkers, New Rochelle, they need certain concrete investments from the federal government in their or in their communities it's it's jobs it's housing it's transportation and Jamal Bowman has not delivered that no I think I think there's a level of production that we're not meeting I look at other districts I see congressman Richie Torres uh, doing a fine job I see uh, up upstream congressman Pat Ryan working hard on issues that affect their district and I think that's the model of what we need to have we need to have someone who understands and can deliver on those kinds of needs so at one level that's important on the next level up, there are a lot of societal issues, and we'll talk about foreign policy, we'll talk about Israel, in which the, the mainstream of Westchester and the Bronx is in one area, and, and the policies that have been advanced are, are completely different from that. So one of the things that uh, a number of people have raised as a possible issue is his position on Israel. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of Jewish groups have urged you to run why why is that his policy not resonating with Jewish voters in New York? Well, I think it's first it's important to understand that in Westchester County we have the second largest concentration of Jewish residents and voters of any place in the state New York City being number one the Jewish community and I'm Roman Catholic um, really has a, a, a real concern about what the United States policy is toward Israel. They see Israel as a democracy, and like all democracies, the United States, France, England, were all flawed in some way, shape, or form. But that it still represents the best hope uh, and, and as a person who is Jewish, they look at Israel as a state that they, they know has a right to exist. It should exist on the defensible borders. And the policies that we take, and, and we're not running for Secretary of State, we're running for a seat in Congress. The policies that the Biden administration is pursuing is trying to work with an ally and shape the allies' policies, not give them a blank check, but, but work in ways to defeat Hamas. Because the issue here is Hamas is a terrorist group, what they did on October 7th, and what they might do on any future date in April or July or November in the future if they're let to continue on. The, the sort of antipathy to that point of view is, is clearly what the current congressman has, and the Jewish community has been very upset about it. It's not a universal 100%, but a vast majority of those who live in Westchester County who are Jewish are unhappy with his positions and feel that he has ignored their feelings. In the same way, I would say that as a person of Irish and Italian background, I have an emotional connection to Northern Ireland, and the troubles that occurred in Northern Ireland make people of similar heritage feel that we want to see peace. We don't want to see uh, a, a diminution of attention by the United States in trying to solve those issues and problems. So I understand that, and I don't think you can afford to ignore the Jewish community's concerns about Israel, and, and you, you need to be more empathic, and even if you have a different set of policies, work with the community, not ignore the community or, or disdain their concerns. But in the past several days and weeks, he's been trying somehow to come back from those uh, extreme policies or at least try to make peace with some of the members of the Jewish community. Is that succeeding? 
I, I don't think so in that you can do symbolic things like you'll have a breakfast and you'll call it a unity breakfast but then when you have an opportunity to vote for for a resolution that deals with the outbreak of anti-semitism on college campuses you vote no on that resolution that that widens the gap it doesn't close the gap there is no question that we should all be against anti-Semitism and racism and anti-Asian prejudice all across the Islamophobia. board. Islamophobia. Right, Islamophobia. All of those different isms are objectionable, and, and we've certainly worked that way in Westchester County. And so I don't think that you close the schism when you vote no on a resolution that, that 400 some odd of your colleagues voted yes on because we want to deal with a problem that's occurring on the campuses right now. So basically, are you saying that you think he's out of touch and out of tune with the needs of the, the different communities in the district, and you know, as you point out, it's an urban and a suburban community. Well, let me say it this way. I think I'm more in tune with what's happening in those communities. Uh, I grew up in the south side of Mount Vernon, which is an African-American neighborhood. <coughs> I've spent time as a kid uh, in the Bronx, the North Bronx, I went to college in the Bronx. First job was in the Bronx, first girlfriend was in the Bronx, that didn't work out, but, but you know, the, the connections are there for me. And then as a Westchester County Executive, I've been in and out of every one of these municipalities in a substantive way. We've done things in the city of Mount Vernon, restore Memorial Field, in Yonkers with recreation and, and, and other needs, housing in New Rochelle. All of those things represent being connected to the district in a way that you have to be if you're going to be that district representative in Washington, D.C. So how will redistricting, the fact that these lines are going to be redrawn, affect you? And could it cause you to decide to drop out of the race? Well, I plan to be in the race regardless. But uh, as you said at the front end, the rolling of the dice, the, the greatest question that we can't answer at this stage of the game as we're speaking now in December is what the lines will look like. We know that the redistricting is going to happen all across the state. That's a big jigsaw puzzle. It involves uh, the island all the way up to Buffalo. Uh, it is possible that the district lines as they exist today could be made more advantageous to him. They, in theory, could be more advantageous to me, or they could be roughly the same as they are now. And we won't know that until later in the year, perhaps as late as March. I don't know. April, it could be that late. And so whatever I do right now to try to make my case to voters, I may have a different set of voters to look at by the time the primary comes around. So that makes it difficult. But will you still stay in the race? Yes. Yeah, I'll be in the race either way. There's a point of principle here that I'm going to argue. And it's not just a negative toward uh, the way the incumbent is operating. It is offering a positive alternative, things that I believe we should do. I just put out a, a release that's going to reach the papers today, in which I want to have a quarterly congressional uh, update call with all the elected officials in the district to let them know what's happening in Washington. I intend to visit all of the community boards in the Bronx uh, and, and all of the municipal governments in the first quarter of the year. That may sound like grunt level stuff, but that's the kind of connection that I would bring to the table. And we're going to have to leave it right there for now, but we'll be right back.